Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings and it's finally spring. It's the beginning of April and I wanted to take you for a walk through my garden to show you what it's currently looking like. So we'll start off in the front yard and you can see I don't have any of my pots in the landscape yet because it's still too early here in Michigan in our zone 5 garden to be putting out any type of annuals. Um, also one thing to point out is I don't really have a lot of shrubs in the front yard that give me like year-round color. So a lot of the color for the house is from the annuals that I put in. I've emptied out my hanging baskets and I've emptied out the container there so they're prepped and ready for when it starts warming up and I can start putting those annuals in those places. Under the window here is the Bobo Hydrangea and we shaped them last fall, trimmed them back and right now there's just a little touch of green starting. Let's go in for a closer look. You can see there's a little bit of green there, so they're just starting to leaf out just a little bit. As we take the corner here, this is my proudberry bush, and this definitely is getting a little bit more green on it. Um, you can see that starting to leaf out as well. This is that beautiful shrub that had the pink berries on it in the fall and in the winter. Um, so I'm excited for that to start reflushing out again for the season. Under this tree, we have the, Ar the Arborvites. These are the Anna's Magic Ball, and they're doing really well. That's about the only color I have out in my garden for winter interest or even year-round interest. Um, the white box you're seeing is we had a skunk digging in the yard, so that is a live trap if we can catch him. The tree in front of us, this is a lilac tree, and yeah, let's go in for a closer look. And this thing is just loaded with buds. We'll see if it'll focus there. Um, so yeah, the buds are really swelling and I would think this might be blooming depending on what our weather does here within probably the next maybe three weeks or so. Um, so this is a standard lilac. Basically what that means is all the lower branches have gotten trimmed off the bottom of the tree uh, to make it more of a tree form than an actual shrub form because lilacs are typically a shrub type form. But I wanted to have something that had that lilac look, but also had that tree, tree type of shape. Um, now this here, once it's done flowering, I think I wanna really trim it back because it's probably about eight foot wide right now. And I'd like to trim it back to maybe about five foot. Um, but we didn't wanna do that in the fall because then I would have sacrificed all my flowers this spring. And I certainly did not want to do that. Um, so this will hopefully get a good trimming here uh, after it's done flowering. As we head down the side of the garden here, we've got in front of us, that's the quick fire that was trimmed back in the fall. That's a hardy hydrangea. And if you have a hardy hydrangea in your landscape and you're thinking, well, I didn't trim mine in the fall. It really needs to be trimmed. That's okay. You can do that. The hardy hydrangeas such as limelight and quick fire, firelight, they all bloom off of the new growth. So you don't need to worry about sacrificing this year's blooms by doing the trimming. Um, and this one here is just starting to leaf out a little bit as well. So really the gardens are just slowly starting to wake up this spring. The last couple weeks have been pretty nice, um, but that doesn't mean much here in Michigan. We could have a couple inches of snow any day now as well. Uh, as we go down the hill, we've got butterfly bush. This is a pugster butterfly bush. So that's starting to come back. And then there's bobos, every other plant. Up against the house there, that is a hardy hydrangea. I believe that one is little lamb. That also was trimmed back last fall and is just starting to leaf out again. One thing that is putting out a little bit of color is the Euphorbia bonfire. Let's go in for a closer look. So this here is Euphorbia bonfire. It's got really great foliage and it's going to flower yellow flowers as soon as they come out. Um, that would be a flower once it starts to bloom. Uh, but the foliage is looking really nice right now. As we back up, I'm going to point out to you the hardy hibiscus. So this is a hardy hibiscus, uh, one of the summerific series. There's a lot of dead sticks there and that's fine. It was trimmed back last fall. And I won't see any sign of life on this until June here in my June five or <laughs> in my zone five garden. So don't worry if your, your hibiscus don't show any signs of life 
and everything else is green, that's perfectly normal. It's going to be one of the last things in your garden to show any sign of life. So just be patient. It will happen. As we head down and around the hill here, this here is a smooth hydrangea. I believe this one is ruby. It's not blooming, so it's hard for me to tell right now. Um, but you can see this one is starting to leaf out. The smooth hydrangeas, they can get trimmed in the fall or in the spring. They bloom off of the new growth. So if you need to trim yours back or shape it, you don't need to worry. It will flower this year because it's a new season, um, blooms off of the new season's growth. In the back there, those also, I think those are mini mauvette or wee white. So again, part of that smooth hydrangea family. And those two are just starting to leaf out a touch. I've spy color. This is a hellebore. So this is about the only thing that we'll probably find flowering in the garden right now. This is really pretty, a nice lemony yellow one. This is an evergreen in the winter. And you can see how it has beautiful spring flowers. <clears throat> kind of inside the garden right now. And we're looking out through the arbor. Um, in front of me, I wanted to show you this. So this is a huge hosta, and it's, I believe this one is actually hosta sege. But as you can see, the whole middle of that thing is, has really died out, and all of the new leaves are coming around the outer edge. This is a really large blooming hosta though. So when it does finally leaf out and fill out, I won't even see that hole in the middle. It'll be all filled in with beautiful foliage. All right, in the garden here, and there's another hellebore or Lenten rose. This one is a beautiful pink shade. So these here, you can see, these, these have been blooming for probably about three weeks now. So these are kind of really what you'd call like the spent flowers. That one's pretty fresh. But even after these things are done flowering and the flowers um, fade and get old, the hellebore really do look nice for usually a good month after they're past their prime and sometimes longer, because those flowers just hold the color. We've got a few things starting to emerge. Uh, that broad leaf there, that's gonna be um, an allium. Next to it is daylilies. Looks like the astilbe is starting to come up there, along with my Inca ice alstroemeria. That's pretty much what this garden looks like right now. Not very exciting, with the exception of just those couple little hellebore giving us some color. As we head around down into the back of this garden here, if you've watched any of my other videos, be sure to watch the July garden video. That one is in its prime. Uh, this has the dwarf bloomering lilacs. It has the my Monet wajila, atlas rose, and then it's got some corabels. So let's take a look at the My Monet. So what you're seeing here, that is the shell of My Monet. And I can see that it is starting to bud out a little bit on the tips of those branches. So that will be a nice variegated green and white bush with red flowers this spring. Here is the dwarf bloomerang. And this one is leafing out. And I can also see tiny little buds on the tip of the branches. So that will be really pretty. Uh, so this one is about three foot tall. So this is a dwarf variety. And this will rebloom throughout the summer as well. So really nice. What I might end up doing though this summer is I, I only want it to be about two foot tall. So I think I'm gonna trim that one back. And I, I probably will even still get flowers even after trimming it. But I wanna let my first cycle of blooms do their thing because they're gonna be the most um, most vibrant, the most, the best show. And then once I trim it back, I'll probably even still get some flowers later on the summer. So we'll see. Those guys I think are going to get a trim this summer. In the middle, that is a standard limelight hydrangea tree. So again, it's a limelight shrub that all the bottom branches were trimmed off of to create a standard tree form. And that one got trimmed back last fall. So it's about four foot tall and four foot wide. So I'm excited to watch that one bloom this summer as well. 
So this is a really a fun garden. I'll put some red sun patients in here this year again, just to kind of fill in the bare spots. And once these flowers fill out, it's going to look really beautiful. Let's head on back to the butterfly garden and see what's going on back here. All right, <clears throat> up in this front little area, it's kind of fenced in to keep the rabbits out, although the rabbits still get in. Um, but there's cone flower in there, so they're just starting to come out. So that's looks like there's a couple good patches and then a couple that look like they seeded themselves. So that should be a nice color this, this summer. Bobo hydrangea. Now this one, I don't see any leaves, uh, any sprouting on yet. So this one might be just a little bit behind the others, but you can at least see the shape of this plant. It's been trimmed to about three foot tall and three foot wide. And that was done last fall. Next to it, this is, although it's kind of all blending in, there we go. This is the Miss Molly butterfly bush. And I did not trim this one in the fall because I wanted to wait to see where the new growth was coming from. So here in the zone five garden, typically we're not gonna see new growth off of any of these upper branches, um, just because butterfly bush die back to the ground around here. So let's take it to ground level and look. And sure enough, I'm seeing some green down there at the bottom. So this will get trimmed, and there's actually a little bit of green there. So we'll probably trim this one to about 18 inches and then let it grow from that point. This is another bobo, three foot tall, three foot wide. And this one too, like the other one next to it, I'm not seeing any signs of green yet, and I'm not surprised. Although there is a little weed in the middle, daffodils, but in the very middle, there's a weed growing. It's amazing how a weed can survive. And this little patch here, this is a really weird, weird spot in this garden. It's very dry and sandy. And why just this one spot is dry and sandy? I don't know, but we put a lot of the more drought tolerant plants in this little corner. So things I'm seeing coming up are a little bit of Monarda. And this is, uh, I think some Stachys some Veronica, and of course a cute little daffodil. And let's walk through the center here of the garden. And we've got another allium. That's that really broad leaf one there next to the daffodil. Some Veronica, lupin, which that has really pretty foliage. I believe this here is a sedum. And behind it, oh, this is fun. This is Amsonia storm cloud. So this, when it comes up, it is like virtually black. Let's go in and look closer. On the tip of those black uh, stems are the buds. You can kind of see the little buds in there. So as this plant grows and gets about 18 or 24 inches tall, that's when it's gonna start flowering with beautiful blue flowers. Behind it, this is a Wajila. This is the Sonic Bloom Pink. And I'm not seeing a lot of growth yet here. What's this? Oh, that's nothing. So this one is still waiting to wake up. So pretty much the little splashes of green that I'm seeing right now are the Lupine, the Salvia, and the Veronica. Behind that blue pot, that is a patch of Phlox. So that looks like it's really spreading. That'll be pretty. Up front here, I have a grouping of five of the Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. So those are coming back really nice as well. A lupine there next to the little boy and girl. And then in that cage, that's a delphinium. So this is a tall delphinium that will get about three or four foot tall. And every year I miss it and then it breaks and tips because it gets so tall. So last year I put this tomato cage there. So as this thing grows, it'll grow through that tomato cage and then hopefully that will help support the plant as it gets taller. In the back, it looks like I've got some echinacea that's coming and that stuff has seeded itself too. So that'll be a pretty cool patch of color. Lupine. And then the flocks. 
On the corner here, this is the Firelight Hydrangea. And this one was trimmed in the fall. And this one is starting to sprout this spring. So just a little bit of green starting to show. And in front of that, we've got some sedum. So the sedum is definitely starting to come up really nicely. Sometimes with sedum, a tip is when you get around the 4th of July or so, sometimes I'll trim them back because by the fall, they'll kind of start to split open depending what kind you have. Um, so if you tend to find that in your garden that your sedum split, go ahead and give them a little trim around the 4th of July. All right, we're gonna take a walk back now out to the hosta garden and see if any of the hostas are starting to wake up. Definitely this is not as colorful of a video as what we would have in the summer, but I think sometimes it's fun to see like, what does the garden look like when it's not doing much? So there are a few little hostas starting to poke up in the garden. And I'm hoping they just kind of slowly do their thing. And the reason why is because the hosta, if we get a cold spell, it's going to make the hosta really ugly if they start to leaf out. Um, once your hosta leaf out and if they get knit by the frost, it just, it does a number on them and makes them look ugly. So just, they can take their own sweet time as they're emerging because let's let them come out when it's safe here in Michigan to do so. We all know they're going to do what they want to do, but let's just hope it's slow. All right, I planted some hellebore I forgot about. So let's take a look here. This is a beautiful black one. This is a double. That's really pretty. And over here, I tucked another one in. Nice. One thing I wanna point out in this garden is all this green you're seeing here. My neighbor brought some plants from a place and put them in his garden. Guess what? Invasive species all over. And it's making its way into my garden. So be very careful when you take that beautiful daylily or hosta or whatever from an unknown location and plant it into your garden. Make sure you have shaken it off really good and have gotten anything that could be in that clump of dirt with it out. Otherwise, you're gonna be bringing some pretty nasty plants potentially into your garden. So be careful when you take a friend's plant home. You may be taking a couple you don't want with it. All right, this area here, let's see. Wow, hosta again. We also have some pulmonaria starting. Just a little touch of pink there. There's some heuchera that don't look so great yet. So they'll be coming back. Oh, this is a uh, sedge grass. So that's adding a little bit of fun color. Some more hellebore. Boy, oh boy, I need to come out my garden more. It's starting to get too busy though. Beautiful, beautiful. Behind it looks like it's a double, double red. Might have even been a black, that's really pretty. And what do we got here? Ooh, I think that's confetti cake. Really nice. So these I think I just planted last year. That's probably why I forgot about them. So yeah, one year of growth in the garden. That's starting off to be a pretty nice clump. This here, one of my favorite spring bloomers. This is Dicentra Goldheart, just starting to emerge. And the thing I really like about that is from the window in my house, which is about, oh, I don't know, 250 foot away, once that thing gets big, that yellow really pops. And actually you can even see here as I stand back, how some of those yellow foliage plants, even from here, just really kind of stand out. Uh, let's take a look up the hill again. So here we have rhododendron. And guess what? I saw deer in my yard this winter. Dang it all. Look at right there's evidence. Deer track. And here's more evidence. Those suckers ate all the blooms off my rhododendron. So no blooms for me this spring. And that's not a battle I'm going to fight. So we'll see if we keep them or 
replace them with something else because this is really the first year I've seen deer in the garden. And I think once they come, that means they probably have a new path. So what they do is there's a creek back here. And I don't know if they go down and get water in the creek or whatever, but there's a berm that follows through the neighborhood all the way down and along the creek. And the deer will just walk along this top path back and forth to wherever they're going and coming from. So this is where we see them is just up on this berm. But I've seen them a couple times now, so I need to start thinking deer proof. Which some of you are thinking it's about time Heidi has to start talking deer proof because welcome to our world, right? Here's another Amsonia storm cloud starting to come up. Beautiful black foliage in the back. Look at this beautiful golden hosta. So pretty, especially once that thing opens up. That golden foliage just really stands out from afar. Uh, Daylilies going banana there along the top. And let's see what we got as we move along. Got our neighbor's trash, their bucket, their window box. It's amazing what ends up in the backyard. All right, some corabels, some sedum, little grouping there, allium. That's allium serendipity. It's coming up really nice. We've got ligularia. Corbels. In the back there, that is the incredible blush hydrangea. Let's see what that's doing. Just starting to leaf out a little bit. So that'll be really pretty. You can tell those were trimmed. My little patch of daylilies, they are about 12 inches tall now. So those definitely are coming up and looking good. I have some lilac. I lie. That's not lilac. That's lavender. My bad. So this is lavender, a grouping of three. So they're starting to come back good. Spirea is starting to leaf out a little bit. Nice color there. All right, let's go take a look in the corner here. I just, I need to really try to get some more wildflowers or something that's really early spring blooming in this area. So I have more to show you. All right, this area here, there's a lot of flocks coming up. A lot of hibiscus, which aren't coming up yet, but you can see they've all been trimmed back. Looking good. Oh, I found a hidden gem. Forsythia. And I never see that because of where the shed sits. So there's a beautiful forsythia starting to bloom back there. And actually, I'm going to walk up there. This is kind of the weed field. But um, we also have a quince up there. So let's take a look and see if the quince is starting to flower. It's getting ready to. So this here is the double take quince. And you can see how the blossoms are really, really starting to form there. And they just, they line up and down the branches. So I think this one is the pink, pink one. So I'll probably check this maybe in another week or so, probably another week I'm thinking. And I bet you this will be really in full bloom. So this is a quince, what it looks like before the flowers emerge. And the nice thing too with this quince is it's thornless. So that's really a big selling point for the double take quince is they're thornless. Most quince have thorns. So this one is really kind of really garden friendly. All right, let's head back up. All right, so this is the incredible hydrangea that's been trimmed back. It's starting to leaf out and nestled in there right next to it is um, where it's kind of spread. So that's really a nice big patch of the incredible hydrangea. Here's a bobo, and this one too, not starting to leaf out at all. Here is Invincible Spirit. That's starting to get a little green flower starting. Spirea, it's got some beautiful yellow and red tones to it. I'm back here, let's take a look. The clematis are starting. 
So they are. So I really need to get out here and pick these clematis up off the ground, move my arbor a little bit so it lines up better and kind of weave them in so that they can climb up that nicely. They'll do their own thing, but I want to really help them along because I want to make sure that they go up and not on the ground. So this trellis here, this falls off or falls over every year. So this will have to get propped back up again and the clematis that climb up it are starting. That's a nice clump. Uh, so this is pink mink and I believe these are both pink mink that climb up it. So they're, they're looking really good. Allium serendipity right there, the clumping of five. Got another spirea. Actually, it looks like there's a couple of them in there, three of them. So they've kind of all grown into one. I was just thinking as I was walking past here that that's a pretty big clump. So I think once this is done flowering, this is gonna get trimmed back too because that's a really a big clump that I want dialed back in. Behind it is the fine line romnus. That is starting to leaf out. Beautiful green going on. Nice dense branching on that plant. A super columnar habit. This is Baptisia. And oh, it is starting to come up. So if we look way in there, you can see those little purples way down. That's the start of the Baptisia. That's a hibiscus, so that'll be a while. And then here's another proud berry bush. And this is starting to leaf out as well. Beautiful green leaves. Some daylilies and another hibiscus. And let's take a look what these clematis are doing. Oh, these clematis are doing really nice. Nice thick clump there. Looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about eight clematis that I grow up this eight foot section of fencing. And it's just chicken wire that I put between two four by fours. So that will be really, really pretty. This area here, this is the area that's a work in progress. And I probably have said that for the last three years and we just never get to it. So one of these times, this has really got to get dug out and redone. Um, I don't know. I think it's kind of, we don't know what to do with it. So we just kind of leave it, I think is really the honest reason that we haven't done much yet. This here is a wine and, ro wine and roses wajila. And it is starting to bud there. So as you can see, like there's not a ton going on in the garden yet, but I did want to just kind of show you the state of where my plants are at, because maybe you're thinking, God, I feel like, you know, everyone else has got such beautiful green gardens going on and things are flowering and all that. And mine just looks really brown. Well, depending where you live, don't take it personally. Mine's still looking pretty brown as well. And to be honest, I don't want it to green up too quickly because I know here in Michigan, we always get that surprise frost late in April. And that really does a number on the plants if they're too far along. So just be patient. Spring will come when it's ready to. Your plants will start greening up when they're ready to. So just patience is what I can say. Um, we're gonna end with one shrub I planted last year because I really wanted to see what it would do in the landscape. So let's take a look at this last little beauty in the garden. This is the Pyrrhus interstella and it's just starting to get its berries forming. So it's a really pretty, pretty shrub. It's really small yet, needs to be wet around. Um, but once these clusters ripen and get bigger, this is an absolutely beautiful addition to the spring garden. This is Heidi from Garden Crossings.